Some of you may already know what's in this very large box right here. Some of you may not. Definitely something different than anything I've ever featured on the channel before. This is a, a pair of boots that probably like over the last year, I've been off and on again about whether or not I actually wanted a pair of these. And then it kind of moved into whether or not I'd actually wear a pair of these. I probably would. I'd probably actually like really like them. A bit of a backstory. So this is a pair of engineer boots. Let me give you a little background for those of you that are not as familiar with engineer boots, and then I'll share the actual pair of boots here. Originally, these were developed in the 1930s for firemen working on steam trains. The boots, engineer boots, gained much more popularity after World War II, mainly within like the motorcycle culture. They continued to evolve and become more popular symbols of kind of like a rebel, uh, kind of like, I guess you would call it like a greaser aesthetic. That really has nothing to do with why I love them, or I think I love them. But it's just an important kind of, you know, unique piece of history about like where did this boot even come from this is a pair of clinch engineer boots from brass tokyo i got this pre-owned actually off of ebay and let's go ahead and open them up so as you can see here this is a us nine and a half this is in it just says over here this is in the uh over dyed brown horse butt leather and the classic clinch soft toe last which is probably an important detail that i don't necessarily appreciate all the way but let me open them up and i'll kind of give you more of the background about why i chose this particular pair so if this is the first time that you guys are seeing a pair of engineer boots Yes, they are, they're rather big. But just to kind of give you a, a frame of reference here, this is, you know, an ankle dress boot. Again, my favorite from Acme Shoemaker, but just a frame of reference here in height and size. You know, it's a, it's a substantial difference from, you know, a normal boot that, that uh, you know, the folks that are normally watching this channel are, are kind of used to seeing. And that's what's kind of exciting about it. Now, again, this is the uh, the clinch boot in the classic clinch narrow last with a soft toe, so unstructured. This is in a brown over dyed horse butt leather, and uh, it's got the uh, uh, the half um, O'Sullivan's sole and heel, and it just really has some fantastic details. All the way around that we'll uh we'll definitely kind of like hone in on a bit but i want to talk a bit about like why why this engineer boot as you can see just from the initial glance there's definitely a nice bit of signs of wear and everything already all over the boot and you know that's both part of getting a pair of pre-owned boots but in particular getting a pair of pre-owned engineer boots these are definitely you know in this leather something that is built to really kind of take a beating. There are plenty of engineer boot options out there. The first thing that was really important to me was definitely the aesthetic of the boot, but even more so, like I wanted a pair in the horse butt leather. Traditionally, like, you know, many hides of, of horse rump or horse butt contain the shell cordovan inside of it still. So like, if we look at a pair of shell cordovan, essentially like the this is lined, but essentially the reverse side of shell is the skin of the horse. And this is the skin side of the horse rump or the horse butt leather. So what, what'll happen in order to get to the shell cordovan, at least at the Horween tannery, what they do is they typically flip it over and kind of shave down from the flesh side to get to the shell. So the skin side is still on the reverse side of the shell with horse butt leather you don't have to shave down to get to the shell because it's not about the shell. Now, part of the complexity there is that not every horse butt has a fully developed like shell inside of it. Not gonna get into the mechanics of, of how a horse butt works, but um, essentially like that's why this leather really like resonated with me because even though it's, it's not technically shell cordovan, it has many of the properties that shell cordovan has as far as its 
robustness, its uh, kind of like sustainability, the, the characteristics of how it rolls, like you see up here in the shaft of the boot. And uh, that was something that was kind of like a, a non-starter, had to be horse butt. The other part was I didn't want a tan boot. I wanted a darker brown. I'm just kind of like over the whole tan boot thing, tan boot, tan shoe. Like I think a boot like this with it being as substantial as it is, um, having a, a little more like reserved complex color on it as opposed to a really like bright tan one. I think this, you know, serves me much better. This is much more versatile. I can wear it in many more settings and it kind of like flies under the radar as opposed to, you know, a very like bold, bright tan color. The other aspect is really what we get here in the last. And in talking to a lot of folks that are very familiar with engineer boots and have as many pairs of engineer boots as I have dress shoes, said that like clinch, while it's a fully handmade boot, so it's hand welded, all that kind of stuff. It's one of the most difficult boots to fit because they're classic last, what you see here, which is the clinch narrow last. I saw it was like, this is the best last. So I figured, you know what, I'm gonna kind of trust my gut on this one and go with the shape that I think looks the best. And I'm gonna use all the knowledge that I have about how my own feet fit into different shoes and boots. Wait until I can find the exact model of this and the exact size that I need and give it a go. And I found this on eBay and I was about to, I was able to get it for about like half of the retail price, which is I think just under $2,000. So I really, really like love this so far. I just got this probably within the last week. I got it on Monday. So four days ago, five days ago. And I had to like wear it right away. It was definitely an adventure kind of getting on for the first time, but it's got, the, these two straps like built into it. So like this is a completely different animal than like anything I've ever featured here. But it's got these two straps on it that actually like help you to pull this onto your foot and it fit rather effortlessly. You kind of like stick your foot into this boot much like you do like a shoe tree or a lasted shoe tree into a bespoke boot. You gotta twist it and put it in at the right angle. And then it's kind of just like slides right in and, and fits like a glove. I love shoes and boots that don't have laces. That's what really like attracted me to these is just like, this is just seems like a very like practical, a practical boot that is gonna be easy to put on, easy to take off, despite what everybody else has had to say so far. And to be honest, like that's kind of what my experience is. I haven't had much trouble getting it on or getting the boot off. It looks really nice. I think with, with that new pair of Studio de Artisan denim that I have, Got another new pair of denim. Well, it's actually a vintage pair of denim coming in. It's a pair of Levi's 702XX, which is, uh, I'll have another video about that. But yeah, I mean, honestly, like, I've had my reservations about making a purchase like this for a while, but I really, I really kind of like pressed the pause button, talked to a bunch of people, figured out what, what they liked what they didn't like, what the different boot options out there were. And when it when it came down to it, I already know <laughs> with myself, I kind of lean towards the, the higher end, not just like the higher end prices, but the higher end build qualities. So like the fully handmade shoes, the fully handmade boots, the higher end leathers, like I just tend to uh, be more satisfied with that purchase because it performs better for me. And uh, that meant I had to delay being able to make a purchase like this, but I think it was well worth it because honestly, like there's not a, there's not a part of me that regrets this whatsoever. And I've worn this already like three days out of the four days that I've had it. And uh, I love it. It's everything, honestly, that I was hoping it would be and a little bit more. This leather is the first like horse butt leather that I've had. And uh, it's exactly what I expected. A very like thick, sturdy, performs like shell cordovan. I'll definitely have to see like how truly like how versatile this is in comparison to what my like normal wardrobe is and what I, what I feel co most comfortable wearing. But you know, when it comes to jeans, I can definitely see like this fitting into uh, that aesthetic 
chinos trousers like just as much as any of my other boots because once your pant leg is over these like nobody really knows the difference if they're as comfortable as they've been so far i can't really see a reason why i wouldn't wear these as much if not more than than some of the other options that i have i'm sure some will kind of give me some crap about <laughs> some jokes that i may have laughed at in the past ashwin about uh <laughs> engineer boots and if uh anybody actually wears these things but um, I can confidently say like, I've never made fun of them. I've maybe made fun of the people that wore them, but it wasn't because they were wearing them. It was for another reason. But uh, yeah, I honestly, I couldn't be, couldn't be happier. Really excited to have this boot and really curious to hear what you guys think of it. If you guys want to check out the other unboxing of my favorite boot right here, I'll link that right above my left shoulder. And if you guys want to check out the Shell Court of Podcast, I'll link that playlist right over here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.